It has begun. I will show you your worst nightmares. Where were they? I will give you the despair. Welcome to another job presentation video. And as you voted for this job and it is my favorite tank since Heaven's Ward, today we take a closer look into that darkness which lingers deep within all of us featuring the Dark Knight. As my first tank in Endwalker on level 90 and my longtime tanking main, the Dark Knight offers many unique traits to you. With an outstanding look and style that is unrivaled in my opinion, except for the Reaper maybe. But of course for all Bloodborne, Devil May Cry, Death Knight or Soul Reaver fans out there, you will find only joy on this job. So let us bury the light and plunge over the edge into darkness. When thinking about the Dark Knight, my first thought goes into the fast paced combat system. And when being my favorite selling point in Shadowbringers already, it has become even faster in Endwalker, especially with the additions like the Shadowbringer ability. Two stacks of plunge or that combat in general feels a bit more reactive and mitigation is required indeed especially on the early stages of the fight. So to use Oblation and the Blackest Knight as well as your other cooldowns, there's a lot of OGCD weaving required, which is a lot of fun, especially compared to the sloppier habits of warriors and paladins. On the other hand, all those abilities that required insane micromanagement, timing and gear optimization like Blood Weapon and Delirium now have been redesigned to grant more flexibility and instead of pixel perfect precision, now you get sexy edgy action. These aspects kinda have been weathered down from Bloodborne to Devil May Cry. Which of these you prefer is your own choice, of course. And yes, the strategical aspect of the Heavensward Dark Knight was also something I did enjoy a lot. Especially the dot aspect and dark arts, but if that is what we need to sacrifice to get our living shadow ability, it might be worth it. Even though I would still love to see this skill being more interactive or that certain abilities would trigger living shadow abilities. Just imagine that your shadow would really mimic your skills instead of just blasting off his own stuff. I hope we will get something like that in the future. Alright, even though you can clear all sorts of content with each job out there, this here might be an exception in favor of the Dark Knight. As in 6.11 a new ultimate raid Dragon Songs reprise has been released, where according to this overview of the best teams on FF Logs, nearly all of them have taken a Dark Knight into the field which mostly has something to do with the flexibility and value of personal damage Dark Knights are offering after 6.1 changes. Of course, you might watch this video much later and things might have changed due to balancing adjustments, but I do believe that Yoshi P and his team want to continue with that philosophy. To let the Dark Knight deal the most damage and let the other tanks have the slight defensive advantage when it comes to self-sustain or active mitigation. However, these aspects matter more for content where individuals can stand out to make a difference and carry their teammates with them. In Ultimate though, no chance. Each member has to carry its own weight, especially on Dragon Song's reprise, where DPS checks and pixel perfect timing are mandatory to progress further. So having a Dark Knight with Living Death that can get rid of its debuff and the lost health all by itself now is a godsend, paired up with TBN that might still be the most clunky but also most rewarding shield that any job has access to. And you can even help your main tank or other party members to mitigate a significant amount of damage with it. Oh, and absorption effects like the Warrior's Shake It Off are really useful when damage is mediocre. But the Dark Knight's party mitigation effects are superior the more damage is dealt to your party. But like I said, don't let this demotivate you for choosing other tanks for high-end raiding, as the Dark Knight's advantage might be just so small that all the high-end raiders have chosen it over the other jobs because they play all jobs anyways and want to get the absolute best out of their party composition. Or they just waited for the Dark Knight's moment to shine with the latest patch job adjustments and share with me and others the unlimited passion and love for darkness. Leading to the third reason to play a Dark Knight, which are actually two reasons merged together. The style of Dark Knights is not the only selling point, but at least it is one that in my opinion stands out to the competition. Not only does the job gear and signature weapon have a distinct look to them, but skills and animations are dope as hell. Yes, there is love for these aspects on each tank, but I do believe the Dark Knight has the biggest fanbase among gunbreakers. 
And while some players would love to have a two-handed greatsword job on their DPS spot, they sometimes just stick with their tanking role, which makes it a convenience for the duty finder saturation. Nonetheless, this whole argument is being amplified by the best job quest that not only is insanely good on itself, but is embedded into the main scenario quest very nicely, as well as offering my favorite role quest in Shadowbringers, and on top of that, a Dark Knight in Shadowbringers or becoming one during its progression is just purely insane and might be the best storytelling experience you can have. Yes, the best would be to change jobs according to the Warrior of Light in the trailers, but that is a lot of work to go for. Straight up starting as a Warrior or Paladin and then swapping over to the Dark Knight might be a really good way to get the best level of immersion into the Final Fantasy XIV story. Okay, next up there's a personal argument why I love the Dark Knight over the other tanks and that leads us to how the job is constructed in its rotation, especially in its opener. Yes, over the whole fight Dark Knight might take the lead over the other tanks at the moment, but nothing compares remotely close to it when looking at the opener. I mean, Delirium popping off very quickly, Living Shadow being ready in under 7 seconds. But I honestly believe the biggest aspect is how your rotation evolves around magic points or MP. Because as long as you have MP, you can throw in a whole hell of edgy darkness, dealing insane amounts of burst damage on top of your other GCD rotation and damage buildup. Above that, this leads to a very practical advantage, namely when dealing with open world content or whenever you have breaks between your rotation. Yes, each job has big cooldowns that regenerate during downtime, but on the Dark Knight, this might become even more crucial. And while Living Shadow is a sloppy mess and its damage is delayed by sloppy but hella cool animations, consuming your MP as fast as possible will lead to a significant pump at any second you have a well-saturated MP pool. And why is this beneficial? Yeah, because there's still content out there where enemies don't have a very high HP pool or when you have phase transitions, overworld content for example, and there will be a relic weapon content and if by any chance it will continue with the ideas of Bosja and Zednor, this aspect is insanely good and Dark Knight had been a top choice not only as a tank but among the total number of jobs that had been chosen there. What could be reason number 5? General tanking advantages like fast queues or not getting killed too much by duty finder mechanics that you might not focus on and that would otherwise kill you as healer or DPS job? No. We cannot leave TBN, the blackest knight unmentioned, right? As this powerful shield is in a love and hate relationship with many players out there, even some of the other tank abilities have come closer to it in Endwalker. But there is just nothing like TBN. Learned on level 70, which should be acquired much earlier in my opinion, absorbing damage depending on your maximum health points and upon being consumed it grants you all the benefits of the edge and flood of shadow. So, whenever timed correctly, you are rewarded with a defensive bonus on top of your offensive value you would get for spending 3k MP otherwise. And while it could be a cool idea to split this ability from MP, while still offering the same idea behind it, this sweet pain of failing with the mechanic or the boss just not dealing enough damage to break the shield for example, is a bittersweet mechanic no other job has access to. Especially that you're really getting serious Giga Chat vibes every time it worked even though it is actually a simple task to take care of. But I believe the harder you can fail with it and the kinda much DPS value you would lose when the absorption is not consumed entirely might be the exact reason why it feels so good to succeed with it. Which means, apart from initial impressions and thoughts, it is not the Paladin that commands the best active block ability, but the Dark Knight, which might change in the future, but for now still gives me the true tank vibes, especially as you can also use TBN on other targets to help them out with mechanics they might not know yet. That sounds edgy, right? Yes it does, and of course the more edges you have, the more you can cut wounds open. So let me talk briefly about some stuff you might not like on the Dark Knight. First and foremost, I'm glad that I have waited with this video until patch 6.1 had been released, as this eliminates some of the most annoying issues one could have with the Endwalker Dark Knight, as they fixed Living Dead, Blood Weapon and made the Dark Knight more attractive in the early leveling ranges. So what remains here is the fact that you love or hate the Blackest Knight, because I know some people are yearning for a change on this skill as well. But like mentioned before, I do believe it is a necessary element to the Dark Knight's kit that offers some failure potential which is mandatory for each job to be fun and reward the player for playing properly. Yes, there might be better ideas how to achieve both aspects and I would love to hear your feedback and thoughts how to achieve it, but for now it is fine and once getting used to it, this ability might become one of your favorites. 
However, there's one aspect that is not going to change, at least not before a possible full rework of the whole game in 7.0. Which leads us to the current existing requirements that you have to unlock before starting as a Dark Knight. Compared to jobs like Red Mage, Gunbreaker or Reaper that have been introduced in expansions after Heavensward, the Dark Knight sticks with an old level fallback system that it shares with Machinist and Astrologian. Which means, upon reaching Ishgard for the first time and starting the Dark Knight's job quest, your level is reduced to level 30 again. That of course can be leveled up quickly as a tank, but still you're losing progress and this feels a bit strange, especially as this has been redesigned for classes that came in in the more recent expansions, so hopefully they will change that somewhere in the future. Ok, so far so good, but the biggest difference in why your choice might lead to other tanks instead of the Dark Knight is the fact that Paladin and especially the Warrior have a significant lead when it comes to self-sustain and healing power. I mean, there are many people out there calling the warrior the fifth healer and Paladin is at least close to one. So if that is something you're looking for on your tanking journey, especially if you want to keep the fight in dungeons going, even when the rest of your party has died already, choose Paladin or Warrior instead. Which you might end up choosing from the start anyway, as like mentioned, the Dark Knight is locked behind the Heavensward content and expansion. But always remember, the right path might not be a straight one and changing directions is what defines your journey. So become what you must. Take up the Sword of Darkness to reclaim your name and family crest as the Dark Knight, a demon of death. Until next time, bury the light and keep loving Final Fantasy.